thanks for welcoming me here today. So my, my name is Christoph Weber. I'm the general manager of AutoForum in China. So the auto industry, especially in China, has quite some challenges ahead at the moment. So on the technology side, we see that we need to master new technologies like autonomous driving, like uh, electric powertrain, and also to reach fuel saving targets. And then we have the consumer side. And here we see a shift, a change from a pure car sales to actually selling and offering solutions. An entire ecosystem with the user in the center. So to offer these ecosystems, traditional car makers, they need to reach out to partners uh, in tech industry and media industry and to in energy industry. So in this process, they need to be quite careful that they still maintain the identity of their brand so people still know what is BMW or what does Ben stand for, for instance. And then if you look at the market, now over the last months, we saw quite an impressive recovery in China. We saw basically a perfectly V-shaped form recovery here. So that's good news. Also, we saw that the supply chain has proven some surprisingly resilient. So things started up quite smoothly. And also, yeah, the car sales are, are quite impressive. It looks pretty good in the last months. So short term wise, we are quite well on the way and things are well under control. But the real challenge ahead is now the next two, three, five years. Because in the past, the industry has been investing and planning of a, for a market with 35 million cars per year. Um, but now in the new realities, we look at a market in the next two, three years of 20 to 25 million cars. So yes, there's growth, but the growth is much different and there's overcapacity. So we will continue to see, especially in the next months, I expect, consolidation in the market on the OEM side, especially for the volume producers and even more so in the supply chain, certainly. You certainly hear the news in the last weeks. So a lot of OEMs, they announced very aggressive cost-cutting programs. So Toyota, they want to cut 24% of cost. Nissan, they want to reduce 20% of cost. GD, they postponed and canceled quite some vehicle projects. Volkswagen also is reducing cost in some areas. So that's pretty impressive. And I believe that you can indeed squeeze out some 5 to 10% out of your operations, out of your supply chain. That works, that's possible. But if you want to save 20 to 30% of cost, you really need to change the way you operate. That's, that's a whole different story. And in this field, I see opportunity, especially looking at our field, car body stamping. I see that digital transformation, the, the introduction of agile methodologies, of digital twin, has really the potential to save 20 to 30 percent. We are in talks with some of our customers to develop exactly such plans together and we are drafting business cases for these projects and we see that indeed 20, 30 percent of cost reduction, that's, that's possible indeed, yes. So if you want to develop a new car, a new body in white. You have lots of departments and suppliers working together and um, today they do work together but also they don't work together if you want. So today a lot of these departments they use different software tools. Yeah? One uses Excel, another one uses Autoform, another one uses just the experience or maybe some, some paper charts. Um, so they speak a different language if you want. So, um, for instance, in the design phase, in the engineering phase, engineers, they develop concepts, design concepts, manufacturing concepts, but when they hand this over, their work, to the next department, a lot of data and information does not get transferred. So we pay these very highly skilled and talented workers to do their job, but actually we waste a big part of their job. That's, that's quite a shame. And what we believe is if you put all of this on one platform, with one common data format, with one common model, um, this will actually enable people to really collaborate and to basically together build up something that we call the digital twin. So the departments, they, they work and mature and extend the model of the digital twin first in the digital world, from design department, from engineering department, etc., cetera, um, and enrich this model, complete it more. Um, and then later in the production phase, you will execute this model, the engineering intent. 
exactly as intended. Um, and also provide feedback, which is quite important. So in this way, the digital twin is basically the basis to implement agile methodologies. And for me, agility basically means two things. One thing is that you align the whole value chain to the end result. And the second thing is that you get immediate feedback. So the good thing is how to align everyone on the, on the end result means that um, whenever you, the designer makes any change of the design, he will immediately get feedback from the digital twin. What are the implications on the final manufacturing processes in terms of, of cost, in terms of complexity for the time schedule, in terms of weight? Um, so he, he immediately does not only see what is happening inside his department, but he will see through the whole value chain up until the production, what are the implications of his work. So that's the immediate feedback. And, um, and also, yeah, looking, looking at the end result, that's quite powerful. Um, or also today, for instance, we see that engineering concepts are designed in the engineering team, but then on the real shop floor, yeah, for the tool tryout or for the production press shop, um, people actually don't get a lot of these data and they are, they are forced to, to trust their own experience which is not bad, but then you don't have this feedback loop that you validate the model, that you enrich the model, and that, that you learn as an organization together. So there's quite some potential in this, in this field. Um, yeah, and we believe that if you connect this, uh, you, you have this potential. Um, Good question. Yeah, we are here today talking about light weighting, hot forming. We saw some great presentations already. Curly is giving some great presentation today, um, one of my colleagues. Um, and yes, we see that hot forming is a hot topic and it will continue to be. So um, a body in white on the one hand side needs to be light for fuel efficiency. And on the other hand, it needs to be strong for crash safety. So basically you want to square the circle and how to do that. Um, hot forming, press harding is one excellent way to do that because you can have a thinner, lighter sheet material which is stronger because of press hardening effects. However, you have to manage the temperature effects, the, 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 trans the phase transformations, so that's quite complex to handle. Um, or you can use materi materials like, like aluminum. Yeah, so aluminum, you can, if you replace mild steel to aluminum, you can cut some 20 to 30 percent of weight roughly, so that's, that's great. But the downside is that you have to deal with this quite soft material, so you can get very easy surface defects, which is pretty ugly. And also you have a lot of spring back, which you have to manage that you still get a part stemmed, which is inside the tolerances. That's quite comprehensive to do. And for this, you need, uh, you need excellent engineering, you need a good methodology to, to get this done fast and reliably within the budget. Um, and we see in China that so far, most of this advanced engineering was actually not done here. It was mainly done in, in Germany, in Korea, in Japan, and just the production was done in China. But for the last two, three years or so, we see that more and more of these engineering tasks are actually really done in China. Um, so the supply chain and the OMS, they are building up this capacity at the moment. So that's a quite interesting process for us. Um, so the start was quite painful. So for instance, Psych GM, when they had their first Cadillac model with a lot of aluminum parts, that was very painful. They, they took 10 to 20 tool tryout loops for some of the critical parts. So that will bust any time schedule, it will bust any budget for sure. So that's a painful start. But now people are learning how to handle this quite well. Um, but it's still, it's a process. We are on the way there. And also we as Autoform, we do our share in this because uh, you need comprehensive uh, simulation software to get this done and you need the methodology, even, even more important so. Um, so for instance, we did one project in Chengdu with a tool shop for, for end customer PSA or Audi and we could show that with the right software, with the right methodology and with diligent then execution in the engine, in the, in the tool shop and the, and the, the press shop, that you can actually get this done quite well. So in our cases, we had a nice aluminum panel, A-class panel, and was inside the tolerance in the first tryout loop right away. So that proves that this, this can work. Um, so we believe in China very much. We see that the international players, they are localizing more and more. They are, especially in the R&D field, uh, to catch up with a, with a high, high market pace here. And we see also uh, selected Chinese OEMs to become stronger and stronger, really leveling up their game and their technology. 
And that's a trend um, that we are part of, certainly. So we want to continue to invest here. Uh, just last year, we opened a new training center in Shanghai, um, not, not far from here. Um, and in the next one year, we plan to open offices in Shenzhen and in Beijing also. So today already we have a we have a team of technical experts in our team. Most of our support team they before worked for OEMs for tool shops, so they really know the industry. Um, they can really help our customers to solve real problems, and we want to grow this team further you know, to 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 support our customers on this journey of, of digital transformation. Um, so yeah, for for our customers out there or pro interested people out there, if you are thinking about how to reduce the cost, how to really manage systematically your, your, your body and white projects, how to bring it on the next level to, to get the quality you want, to get the timeline and the cost budget you want, please contact us and we are, we are happy to help you with this.